Chapter 6, Inventory Costing and Valuation. Learning Objectives. Identify the components and costs included in merchandise inventory. 2. Calculate costs of goods sold and merchandise inventory using specific identification, moving weighted average, and FIFO perpetual. 3. Analyze the effects of the costing methods on financial reporting. 4. Calculate the lower of cost and net realizable value of inventory. 5. Analyze the effects of merchandise inventory errors on current and future financial statements. Perpetual. 6. Apply both the gross profit and retail inventory methods to estimate inventory. So we won't be responsible for 6. 7. Assess inventory management using both merchandise turnover and day sales in inventory. We also won't be responsible for learning objectives 8 or 9. Vignette video. Inside of one of Amazon's busiest days, 1,500 extra workers help Amazon.com handle the extra holiday orders at its Fernley, Nevada Fulfillment Center. High Speed Robots Part 1. Meet Betty, Bo Betty Bot in Human Exclusion Zone. Warehouses. The Window. Wired. Get a bot's eye view of the Human Exclusion Zone in a massive warehouse where an army of high-tech robots finds and fulfills up to 30,000 orders a day. Assigning costs to merchandise inventory. Accounting for merchandise inventory requires several decisions, which include items included in their costs, costing method, specific identification, moving weighted average or FIFO, merchandise inventory system, perpetual or periodic, use of net realizable value or other estimates, items in merchandise inventory. Merchandise inventory includes all goods owned by a company and held for sale. Items requiring special attention, goods in transit, goods on consignment, goods damaged or obsolete, Cost of merchandise inventory. All expenditures necessary to bring an item to a saleable condition and location. Some examples include invoice price less discounts, import duties, transportation in or freight costs, storage, insurance, handling costs. Assigning costs to merchandise inventory. Management must decide on a method of determining unit cost. This will affect both the income statement and the balance sheet. Methods. First in, first out, which is referred to as FIFO. Moving weighted average. Specific identification. Assigning cost to inventory example. Using the information from Exhibit 6.2 and Exhibit 3, the three inventory methods will be reviewed. First in, first out. Based on the assumption that the items are sold in the order acquired. When a sale occurs, the earliest units purchased are charged to cost of goods sold. The cost of the most recent purchases remain in merchandise inventory. FIFO example. The opening inventory consists of 10 units at 91 per unit. Additional units are purchased at 106 per unit. This results in two layers of merchandise inventory. Under FIFO, units are assumed to be sold in the order required. Therefore, of the 20 units sold on August 14th, the first 10 units come from beginning inventory. Therefore, those 10 units are removed from the inventory record based on the cost of those units of 91. The remaining 10 units sold on August 14th come from the next purchase made on August 3rd. Therefore, these units are removed from the inventory record based on their cost of 106. 
The ending inventory consists of the five remaining units from the August 3rd purchase. Both sales at cost and ending inventory balance must equal goods available for sale. Mini quiz. A company that uses a perpetual merchandise inventory system made the following cash purchases and sales. January 1st, purchased 100 units at $10 per unit. February 5th, purchased 60 units at $12 per unit. March 16th, sold for cash 40 units for $16 per unit. Prepare journal entries to record the sale, assuming a FIFO system is used. Debit cash, 640. Credit sales, 640. Debit cost of goods sold, 400. Credit merchandise inventory, 400. Moving weighted average method. Under this method, the cost of all units are averaged together. Average cost per unit equals cost of goods available for sale divided by number of units available for sale. Moving Weighted Average Perpetual. The opening inventory consists of 10 units at $91 per unit. 15 additional units are purchased at $106 per unit. This results in an average cost of $100 per unit. These 20 units are sold at the average cost of $100 per unit. This leaves five units remaining at an average cost of 100 per unit. Both sales at cost and ending inventory balances must equal goods available for sale. Mini quiz. A company that uses a perpetual merchandise inventory system made the following cash purchases and sales. January 1st, purchased 100 units at $10 per unit. February 5th, Purchased 60 units at 12 per unit. March 16th. Sold for cash 40 units for $16 per unit. Prepare journal entries to record the sale assuming a moving weighted average system is used. Debit cash 640. Credit sales 640. Debit cost of goods sold 430. Credit merchandise inventory 430. Specific identification. This method is used when items can be directly identified, can be directly identified with a specific purchase and its invoice. Examples, automobiles, art, custom furniture, custom jewelry. Specific identification perpetual. The opening inventory consists of 10 units at $91 per unit. 15 additional units are purchased at 106 per unit. This results in two layers of merchandise inventory. On August 14th, 20 units are sold. Eight of these units came from the opening merchandise inventory and the remaining 12 units came from the August 3rd purchase. This leaves two units remaining from the original merchandise inventory and three units remaining from the August 3rd purchase. Both sales at cost and ending inventory balance must equal goods available for sale. Comparison of methods. Because costs change, the choice of an inventory method is important. Financial reporting. Exhibit 6-9 shows the advantages and disadvantages between a FIFO, moving weighted average, and specific identification inventory method. Financial reporting. A company is required to use the same accounting methods from period to period. It's the consistency principle. A change is only acceptable when it improves financial reporting. The costing method used must be disclosed in the notes to the financial statements, the full disclosure principle. Lower of cost and net realizable value. 
The cost of inventory is not always the cost reported on the balance sheet. Principle of faithful representation provides guidance on how to report inventory. At the amount expected to be received on the sale of the item, the net realizable value or NRV, if it is lower than the cost of the item. Inventory must be reported at net realizable value when net realizable value is lower than cost. Lower of cost and net realizable value may be applied in one of two ways. One, usually item by item or when not practical. Two, to groups of similar or related items. Lower of cost and net realizable value calculation by items, Exhibit 610. Lower of cost and net realizable value is lower than total cost. An entry would be required to reduce inventory costs by 10500 Lower of cost and net realizable value calculation by groups. Exhibit 610. LCNRV is lower than total cost. An entry would be required to reduce inventory costs by 9050 LN LCNRV calculation, Exhibit 610, shows when LCNRV is applied to items and to groups. Merchandise inventory errors. Errors in the computation of or physical count of merchandise inventory will cause a misstatement of cost of goods sold, gross profit, profit, current assets, and equity. Cost of goods sold components periodic. So this information is outside of the scope for our purposes. So I'm just going to skip over these slides. Gross profit method. Ending merchandise inventory is estimated by applying the gross profit ratio to net sales. It is used when, merchand mer when merchandise inventory has been destroyed, lost, or stolen, for testing the reasonableness of the physical merchandise inventory count. This method uses the historical relationship between cost of goods sold and net sales to estimate the cost of goods sold with current sales. Calculating the inventory using the gross profit method. If gross profit equals 30% of net sales, then cost of goods sold must equal 70% of net sales. And you're not responsible for the retail inventory method. Describe how management's decisions can affect the determination of the cost of merchandise inventory. The choice of method, FIFO, moving weighted average or specific identification. The choice of application of lower of cost and net realizable value to separate items or categories. The choice of a periodic or perpetual system and the items to include in cost. Financial statement analysis. Merchandise inventory ratios may be used to assess current liquidity, Merchandise Inventory Management, Financial Statement Analysis, Inventory Turnover Ratio, measures how many times a company turns at merchandise inventory over each period. The ratio will vary from industry to industry. The inventory turnover equals cost of goods sold divided by average merchandise inventory. Financial Statement Analysis, Days Sales and Inventory Ratio, used to estimate how many days it will take to convert merchandise inventory to cash or receivables. It's used to assess, assess if merchandise inventory levels can meet sales demand. Day sales and inventory equals ending inventory divided by cost of goods sold times 365. Summary. Identify the components and costs included in merchandise inventory. Two. Calculate costs of goods sold and merchandise inventory using specific identification, moving weighted average, and FIFO perpetual. Three, 
analyze the effects of the costing methods on financial reporting. 4. Calculate the lower of cost and net realizable value of inventory. 5. Analyze the effects of merchandise inventory errors on current and future financial statements, perpetual. 6. Apply both the gross profit and retail inventory methods to estimate inventory. 7. Assess inventory management using both merchandise turnover and day sales and inventory ratios. End of chapter.